You're listening to episode 310. Welcome to Transforming Missions Podcast, providing you with insights and resources you need to lead a movement of Jesus followers. Today we're starting the journey of Lent. Yeah, we might be a day early, but today we want to look at the gospel passage for Sunday and its relevance for today's Christian leaders. So we're going to look at Mark 1, 9 through 15, and focus on the themes of choices. And because we're beginning a season of penitence and preparation, let's start here. Confession. Before we get to the scripture, let me say this. I know I've tried to get something done quickly before, and in my desire for expediency, there were consequences. You're you're not alone. Sometimes those consequences aren't big, but sometimes when we go fast, what we don't see is we're sacrificing authenticity and even relationship. So let's let's look at the scripture that you finally landed upon, Mark 1, 9 through 15. This passage reveals an important one of Jesus' teachings. And Sarah, would you like to read that for us? Sure. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Okay, Sarah, Mark doesn't waste any time, does he? In those few verses you read, Jesus is baptized, he's sent into the wilderness, and we get a peek at John the Baptist and a call to repentance. There are choices in this passage. Uh, His baptism was a moment of preparation, but what really stands out is the second movement, his time in the wilderness. This is where Jesus makes crucial choices that define his ministry. And we don't have all the details in Mark's telling of the wilderness temptation like we do in the other Gospels. Uh, We don't, but... So with Lent being a time for preparation and reflection, um, this passage is an example of Jesus making intentional choices that actually define his ministry. And again, it starts with his baptism. Uh, we know that as a, as a divine affirmation and, ad- and identity. Um, I think an interesting thing about, Ma- uh, about Mark's story is that... Um, uh, John the Baptist does not know that he's baptizing Jesus. It's the only baptism story that there's no conversation. But that's the divine, divine uh, affirmation on identity. Following that important moment, Jesus is immediately led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. I find this transition to be significant, the transition from baptism to wilderness. It's like he's moving from a public declaration to a personal trial, which really speaks to the heart of leadership. A public declaration to a personal trial. That's a good way to put it. Those 40 days in the wilderness weren't just about resisting temptation. They were about Jesus defining his values and priorities, and claiming who he was going to be. He's faced with the choice of expediency, the easy way, versus the path of righteousness. And Sarah, I think this is where the passage really speaks to us as Christ-centered leaders. We're often faced with similar choices. The temptation is to take the easier, more expedient route that's always present. Well, maybe I should do that. That may be for me. I don't know if that's the way it is for everybody else or not. 
Now, are you talking about Mark's expedient route in telling the story versus the expanded version in, say, oh, Matthew or Luke, or, or in the 40 days? That's not a short period of time. Well, there's that, but I'm thinking more about the 40 days. Although Mark models his the whole theology of his writing because immediately Jesus goes here, immediately Jesus goes there. And so we've got him baptized in the wilderness and then beginning to preach. But I'm thinking more about the 40 days. Jesus was in the wilderness. The question I kind of ask is what keeps him there? I mean, couldn't he just come back to town and say, I'm not doing this. It's not going my way. I'm just, I think maybe God has something else for me to do. That would have been a choice, and he didn't make it. He chose the path of righteousness. He wrestles, I say wrestle, he chose to reflect on the inside, who God was inviting him to be on the outside. So just for the fun of it, let's let's look at Matthew and Luke, where Jesus faces the allure of power, the temptation of turning stones into bread. Uh, he could have chosen to take a, the quick route always like the one about going to the pinnacle of the temple and it can toss himself off. I mean, a lot of times those of us who are preachers feel like we have to jump from the pinnacle of the temple every Sunday. That's a temptation. I think what, what's being addressed here is, um, is deeper than immediate needs. Without considering the long-term consequences or the deeper spiritual hunger or really the wrestling that, and I may be projecting this upon Jesus, but I think it's something that we all face as leaders, and that is, am I going to go the way God has created me to go, or am I going to go with the with the crowds or the way people want me to go? That's, that's in my mind right here. Yeah, and take that one one more step and... There's another question for us as leaders. If we're going the way that God wants us to go, then are we addressing the deeper needs of our communities and organizations, or are we simply doing it our way or going the quick route? Yeah, you've got me thinking. When we look at Jesus' response to these temptations, we see actually see a model for our own leadership. He chooses a path aligned with God's will. And oh, you wouldn't listen to this podcast without hearing God's will. It's a way of integrity and authenticity. Seems to be a theme with us lately. Maybe it's because there's a need for those reminders. (laughs) Maybe it's part of God's way. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) But it's not always the easy way especially in the world that we live in. It may be a challenging model, and it's a model that bears fruit, but it goes against much of what our culture promotes, the quick success, the superficial solutions, the do it my way, don't worry about the integrity. The choices that Jesus makes in the wilderness call us to a different kind of leadership. Yes, it does. It calls us to consider the impact of our choices, and not just on our immediate context, but on the broader world. Um, Are we contributing to a culture of expediency? Are we fostering one of deep, meaningful change? Does the desire for security, influence, and comfort lead the way? And what are the consequences of those choices? Yeah, uh, uh, Sarah, it's difficult just to stay with Mark. I'm I'm listening to Luke and and Matthew too as well. But I think where those two those two writers writing to different communities, Matthew Mark was actually writing to a community of people who were under great persecution. So much of their temptation, I think, if I put it in the context, much of the temptation they faced, as it says in the scripture, Jesus was with wild beasts as well as with the angels. And and the reason I say that is that may be code language for the persecution they were under. 
and that they were not only with in persecution, but the angels would have been the presence of God with them. And the last part of that scripture, which I, I think we'll get to, the last part of that scripture is that while they are under this great persecution and knowing God's with them, Mark is reminding them that when Jesus came on the scene after John's arrested and Jesus comes on the scene, he says, listen, God's presence is with us. Change the way you've been thinking about things in your perspective. That's, that's part of the temptation I think we face is that when it's not going right or it's going a different direction, we sometimes forget that God's still with us and is just asking us, let's look at this in a different way. Let's, let's take a different step forward. And I, I'll say this to you, Sarah, you've, you've taught me that even when my first response many times is negative, I get turned back to the positive when it comes to being generous with people or it comes to being looking at the situation a different way. I, I, it's a lot more than my, what we may have wanted, but I think that's a part of the temptation that's being addressed here, the story of this first Sunday of Lent. Yeah, and part of what I'm hearing you point to, Tim, is the the time in the wilderness wasn't just about what he rejected. It's in turn about what he embraced, his reliance on God, his faithfulness. And the question I hear Jesus asking us as leaders is this, how is reliance on God shaping your leadership? That's a question that can inform our leadership Yeah, and again, coming back to Mark immediately in the story that that he has, and in rejecting expediency, Jesus actually embraces a life of simplicity and authenticity, and that's a radical choice, especially in our context of constant um, connectivity, our consumerism. Man, how many meetings have I been in in the church where we'd say, let's take some time to pray and reflect and to look at this in a bigger way. And somebody would say, well, we don't have time to do that. We've got to make this decision now. Yeah. And, and what I hear in that, it's, it's the temptation to make ourselves God. We think. You think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Sorry. naming it. <laughs> because whether, whether it's, the word that's coming to mind is simplicity, but I don't know that that's really what it is. It's more, it's alignment with God. What? How do we say that? Uh, well, one of the ways I like saying it is it just being about God's business. <laughs> it's focus. It's focus. And, and And I have witnessed you and others and I hope I've done it at times myself, that when you try to offer that focus, there can be resistance. Because when you're focused, it means that you can no longer say anything goes <laughs> because you're now focused. And so as leaders, I think the question becomes, how can we help people and empower people to step into that? How do we lead authentically in a world that often values the opposite of, and and it's not even the world, it's a, let's just be clear, it is an American, United States of America thing. That's where we started with this uh, episode of the podcast. It's about making intentional choices. I mean, every day we're faced with making decisions do we, do we follow the crowd or do we stay true to our values even when it's challenging? I, that's a fundamental, those are fundamental choices. So we have 40 days ahead of us that we can practice those daily choices that define us. And as we journey through Lent, reflecting on Jesus and the time that he spent in the wilderness throughout this week, it's an invitation for us to also reflect on our leadership. 
are we leading in ways that align with the values that Jesus embodies and the authentic authenticity that he offers and the focus on God's business that he reminds us of? It's not only a challenge, but it's an opportunity for growth. I, I, Sarah, I have to confess that many years when it came to Lent, it was, it was a task and that they were activities and, and teachings and, I mean, like studies and things like that. And you come to the end of Lent, and then there's Easter. And then when you have Easter, then everything goes downhill, which, which really is ironic since Easter is the peak, and it should be a time of celebration. So built upon this first Sunday and 40 days in the wilderness, we do have 40 days of reflection and preparation. The temptation will be, um, I'm going to be a prophet here, the temptation over the next 40 days will be to fulfill some tasks, to get some things done uh, so we can get to the next thing. And maybe what we're being called to do, maybe, let's take the maybe out of that. What we're being called to do is to be focused, so focused upon, and just using this scripture, being claimed by God, you're my beloved son, you are a beloved child of God. You've been claimed by God. God has something specifically for you to do. You've been created to do it. Nobody else has done it. I mean, we just had an episode on you are amazing. You're created by God. And the temptation in that is to not necessarily be who God created you to be, but to use those gifts and who you are as a beloved child for your own purposes. And your own purposes may be that you just don't want to have to face all the challenges or the, or the, the resistance or the pushback because I'm a child of God. Just remember, you're a child of God for God's purposes, not for yours. That will be part of the temptation. But the last part of that scripture, which is part of Lent as well, and that is, you're not alone. Jesus comes upon the scene and he says, listen, God's with us. Change the way you've been thinking, change your perspective, and let's trust God for the next days. The temptation will be, well, we've done that. The reality is, it's time to live it. That's a good word, Tim Bias. A good word to start the Lenten journey with. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as you start your Lenten journey. May this Lenten season be a time of meaningful reflection and growth for you as you prepare for that wonderful celebration of Easter and the people that you are leading towards that celebration of Easter. Easter. We'd love to hear from you about the choices that you're making, specifically as they relate to Lent and leading through Lent, and maybe so that we can pray for you as well as you face those temptations that come our way as leaders as you make the journey throughout these 40 days. You can leave us a message on the podcast page at transformingmission.org forward slash 310. And remember, who you are is how you lead. Bye for now.